Yeah. We should, yeah. Live audience. Live audience. <laughs> How cool would that be? <laughs> Just sitting up here. That'd be great. Be so good. All right. Uh, we are joined here by the man, Oliver. I can never pronounce your last name. Please educate us on how we pronounce it. Bazanich. Bazanich. I like it. What's that nationality? Uh, so that is from my uh, dad's side of the family. Uh, yeah. Serbian and Slovenian. Damn. Nice. Hell yeah. We'll just keep it close to the, close to the mouth there. Yeah, that's right. perfect. That's perfect. Cool. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Um, as I as I learned, some some sometimes our other guests have had it like down here, yeah. and it and I've like forgot to say something, and then and just it's not too bad. Like had you, to re-record, or yeah, just pretty much I had to call them back in again and word for word script. I, I re I re I reword it so like if that makes sense. So like I'd do the voiceover for you if you if you drop. Right, okay. it too, right? you yeah, yeah, yeah. Safe. Yeah. So you got you you can you can do people's voices and you're. I can. I'm really really good there at it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Incredible. Oliver, I'm, I'm, your, uh, I'm Oliver Pazanic. Did I say it right? <laughs> but close. Close. I'm the captain of the Mariners of the Central <laughs> Coast here. I play soccer. Yo, what's good? There we go. <laughs> Yo, thanks for joining us, bro. Um, this is the seventh, seventh. episode. Shit, seven. We're gonna get that double digit very soon, bro. We're close. Sick. Um, we're very grateful for you to jump on this podcast. Uh, as we just kind of discussed, we kind of just go off the cuff. We talk about anything that's been going on. Of course, want to get to know you a little bit more, um, but we just like to have those conversations that kind of, you know, talk about mental health, but in a fun, light way, you know, um, where the undertone, of course, is about mental health, but it's also just making it, it easier and enjoyable to talk about rather than just being like, feel like we're in a psychologist kind of you know um session. not too formal not too formal you know so yeah how's your day going anyway very good very good yeah just finished up training and then uh had this booked in so no just happy to be here and uh jump on with you guys uh obviously been been coming to see you for quite a while now at, mm. here at uh, Civitas so it's, yeah uh, it's good to good to you know get to know you guys as well and uh mm. Yeah, I'm just you know I think I think it's it's great what you guys do like outside of outside of your um you know the barbershop yeah and, uh, and this is and this is one of them yeah thanks man yeah yeah it's uh it's good fun isn't it Jake if you like it I love it <laughs> just living life aren't we <laughs> <laughs> we are we're just having a little crack and um it's it's a it's a lesson for us too it's quite interesting the deeper we get into these episodes the more we kind of realize what we're doing um and we're talking about it after po- last podcast about there's a certain type of skill that you have to, especially with a podcast, you have to kind of um, gain. A skill that you have to gain is you can't let it kind of like deaden off. You always have to keep going because like people listening at home, they're kind of like they want to be pushed along rather than just being like, oh, yeah. So And like an awkward silence on audio sounds a lot longer than, longer. yeah. In video, yeah. you can kind of tell because you can see people like, Sort of getting somewhere, yes, but exactly as soon as you right. have that little second, it feels like it's an eternity. Yeah. You're sitting in the car, you're like, what's going on? Yeah, for sure. There's it's so many times. There's so many times that like, um, oh, in Cade's episode, right? We got, I got up, I stood up, and stuff like that. I'm sure, I'm sure in the episode is uh, like when you're listening to it, it's kind of like, fuck, what's he doing? You know what I mean? Like you, or you listen yeah. to radio and shit like that. But anyway, so yeah, finish up training. You're into the uh, bit of the season at the moment. Look, we aren't soccer heads. Yeah. We love you as a person, you know, and I think that's really cool to kind of be able to come into like environment, get to meet you with non-biased kind of like people know you for who you are as a as a soccer player, um, and I think that's what we're so lucky to have the barbershop too is to meet people with an unbiased opinion yeah. and get to know you really well, and you're, you're a fantastic uh, family man, so um, and a fantastic just person. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, there's a compliment. I need to come <laughs> yeah, hey, <laughs> done. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, Four Humans. Consulate. It's just an hour of podcast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Podcast, yeah. 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 Um, but we will. I know. I did say to you before the podcast. You know, we're not. We were not going to talk about too much about. You know, where did you start playing soccer and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But it's also really nice to get a yeah. bit of a backstory. Yeah. Because we don't know. Yeah. Okay. You know, let let give us a backstory. Yeah. Well, uh, I've I've grown up on the Central Coast. Um, and yeah, basically from a, from a young age, I played for for my local teams, um, uh, representing like uh, you know Avoca Sharks. Mm. Uh, and then around uh, about when I was twelve, that's when when it starts to get a bit more competitive in uh, in 
in uh, football and you start to you can have options of either staying at that level or you can progress up to um, representative level and that's when I um, took the step up and uh, uh, went to Sydney as well to play you know from kind of like from 13 up to about 16 um, which was which was another step up and another level and it just you know every, every time you take a step up in you know all, all kinds of careers you, you you know you learn along the way so mm. that was pretty important for, for me to, to take that step from going from from the Central Coast playing local to then stepping up to representative level mm. um, and it's also uh, how I how I was able to, to move overseas as well by um, you know, being with some clubs that had links to overseas as well, uh, and then yeah, from there, uh, it's 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 a long story. How long you got? <laughs> <laughs> Heaps long. Um, yeah, <laughs> we got we got about probably twenty five minutes until Plenty I of time. have to uh, press record on the camera again. <laughs> yeah. It's a long going thing. It's like you know, with anyway, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> it's gone over no, this but before. Basically, yeah. from from there, yeah. Um, you so know, was, once, it, was once, it a quick was it a quick jump from representing in Australia to then going to like play overseas? Uh, no, not really. So when I was around 15, 16, I had the opportunity to, to go over. I was playing for Parramatta um, at the time. So, uh, you know, just, just the commitment I had and my, and my family had as well was, mm. was massive. Like, my, you know, my dad was driving me pretty much three, four times a week down to Sydney after, after school. Um, so, that, you know, there was a big commitment at, at a young age to, to do it. And, that, yeah. you know, and, and it just really, um, that, that was, you know, kind of, I, I wanted to do that as a profession and I, and I knew from early on that was you know that's why I wanted to you know that's what I wanted to do yeah um, and then from there I had you know some some good opportunities to go overseas and and to learn and, and to and to progress again yeah that's really cool hey how old were you when you went overseas uh, the first time I went over was around 15 when I went for a trial um, and I was as I was saying uh, I was lucky enough to to be at a club where they had a, um, a partnership with Manchester United which was which so yeah, cool. One of one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, I so know, it, I know, Manchester. you know, you I know, know them. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had the opportunity to go over and, and really experience the professionalism, uh, and you know the level that you need to be at if you want to be if you want to play at the very top level. So that was um, you know a great insight for me at you know that age. Uh, from there, I come back to Australia um, and played played for a few more years here, uh, and then moved moved again back when I was uh, eighteen to play. Uh, in in England uh, for Reading FC, and that's where I started my overseas career. Yeah, wow, well, very very cool. Um, like how how and how long did that last? Go? How old are you now? You're I'm in my thirties. Thirties, <laughs> late thirties or early? No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but like that experience over in over in England would have been an interesting one. Um, what, like. So when you went over there, did you go over with a partner or any, anything like that? Uh, no, when I first went over, I was just by myself. So yeah, yeah, eighteen, young young kid, just going over, trying to trying to break through in uh, in the best you know that the best league in the world. Um, yeah. and it was uh, yeah, it was you know it was it was difficult. It was you know all the, all the emotion, difficult, fun, exciting. Mm. Um, you had you had all the emotions, especially as a young kid as well. So yeah, it was um you know I, I learned a lot from it, and I think I you know I, I grew up pretty quickly from that. Yeah, you would, man. Like mm. j jumping straight into like just moving overseas to, uh, yeah. no matter what. Like it doesn't matter if you're playing soccer or going to go work in a company over there. Just like a massive uh, perspective change of you know moving overseas to another completely another culture. Mm. Not that England has a crazy different culture compared to Australia, but it's definitely people live different. You know, yeah. they do. Yeah. And you got to experience that when mm. you went over there as well. And I've been lucky to be over there as well too. So we can mm. all kind of resonate that. England has a certain kind of energy and vibe about it. Yeah, um, for sure. What was your favourite thing that you enjoyed about England? Um, it's not a lot to enjoy. <laughs> oh, the fish and chips. You know, when I, when I <laughs> obviously go, going there as a young kid, like all, like my my mindset was just all about succeeding. Yeah, uh, as a footballer, so that was that was like the dream, um, and you know that was the main you know the main re the, the reason why I was why, mm. why I was going there. Um, as I got older, then I moved to different countries as well. So I played in Switzerland, I played in Scotland, I played in Japan as well. So yeah. right. moving to those those countries at an older, you know, at, at, as you're getting older, you also learn to appreciate it for different reasons as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you know when I was younger, it was it was you know all about the football. Yeah. Um, then I was getting old, you know, as I was getting older, I, you know, um, have my you know my partner with me as well, traveling 
Um, so then, you know, it, it does start to change and you, you do enjoy different aspects of, of that as well. So, yeah. Sure, it's all about different, like, it's, uh, as I get older as well, into my late 20s, <laughs> uh, I see you start seeing things differently and you start experiencing things differently, especially, you know, having a kid and being married and stuff like that. And, and compared to if I was like 19 or 20 or something, like that, you just see the world so different, don't yeah. you? And I'm sure, you know, you being just a little bit older than myself and whatever, it's even if it's two, three years difference, like you have a different, you, you see the world completely the w- different way that I see the world now, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not saying that, you know, we'll ever see the world exactly the same, but yeah. as you grow and, and experience those things, um, it, you just keep gaining new perspectives. It's, it's fantastic. It's really, really cool. Like, uh, I must say, if, if, if Jacob here was a keen old soccer player, I, we won't, I, I don't like to, we don't like to talk about like, you know, you're a soccer player, let's yeah. talk about soccer all the fucking time. Because <laughs> Cade, Cade's a bodybuilder and like, we didn't want to talk about, yeah. you know, yeah. his nutrition and all that kind of stuff. We just wanted to talk about yeah. fun stuff. And yeah, cool. if you had any funny questions for us or whatever, we're just here to add value. But yeah. say for instance, right, let's, let's get some uh, value out there. Is If any keen soccer players are out there, you know, young kids or whatever that are watching this through TikTok or Instagram, whatever it is, what's what's something that you could probably give them to kind of keep on the path of wanting to become? Uh, they've got yeah, it's 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 a it's a hard question because you know you can you can go over so many different scenarios. Yes, um, but f- but really for a young kid, you know, um, I would say number one, really you need to have fun. Mm. You need to have fun because as a footballer your career goes for a certain amount of time like even if it is like 10 years five years eight years 15 whatever it is you gotta if you're not having fun you're not going to succeed in a long term on mm. you know long term scale yeah um so number one you got to have fun number two you gotta you gotta work you gotta work your ass off like you gotta work so hard you gotta work harder than than anyone else like that was a big thing i learned as well by going overseas that you know you might have you might have a um you know a name here in australia mm. um or you you know you're developing into a you know a really good good player in in the eyes of people here in australia and you're doing really well but then you go overseas and it's like bang you start again you, you yeah of to course one. yeah and then it's in it then it's all over again so that's that's you know definitely something that i picked up that like you just have to continuously work your ass off to get what yeah. you want and there's like and and you've got to have that that op- you got to have you got to have that mindset that growth mindset where you're always growing to develop to be better mm. um and if you do that while having fun like it's just it's just such a powerful combination mm. yeah i think it gets to the point where because i've seen kids that come into the shop and um they are at that point where i think sometimes parents step in and sort of they try and live their success through their yeah. kid and especially in sport and they sit there and sink all this time and effort and that into getting them there that they feel like they're obviously at that point that they can make it, so they're pushing it. And then it becomes like a chore for the kid. Yeah. And instead of them enjoying it and having fun with it, it's just, oh, I've got to go to training four times a week and then on my days off, I have to train at home and all yeah. this sort of stuff. And then they lose the passion for it. Yeah. And then I feel like once you've lost that passion, it's so hard to push yourself because you have to work so hard to get there and make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then it kind of just fizzles out and doesn't really make it anywhere. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're having fun, it doesn't matter if you make it yeah. or not. You're yeah, still yeah, having it's, it's, it's still it's, successful. It de- yeah, it just depends like how you how you see it and and you know what everyone has different goals. So yeah, you know, of course, for someone like myself, it was to to be like the best player I could ever be, possibly be, and mm. that was you know continuous work throughout my whole career to to keep striving for that even now. Um, and I'm into like the later stages of my career as well. So for me, it's just about you know you, you got to have that growth mindset and you got to you got to keep trying to reach those goals yeah. and at the same time have fun. Um, like every time I step up to, out onto the pitch and you know with 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 big crowds and and that kind of thing like I try to I try to enjoy every moment because you never know when it can finish as well that's that's the thing mm. with sport it's just it, it can end at any time yeah yeah serious injury or whatever yeah. you know whatever so yeah you got to have that you know that, that right balance but as you were saying with with um you know parents and I would even say external influences outside like mm. um yeah they can have positive and negative effects and and it's just that balance where you know as a parent if you're if you're um you're wanting to your kid to do that yeah it has to be the right balance of they always need to be the ones pushing it and leading it yeah for sure um, and sometimes they they'll like you know every every player has gone through it where they probably wanted to quit 
and probably wanted to change or do something else. And it's it's like you have to have yeah enough support to go. All right, I'm gonna yeah I'll support you whatever you want to do. But at the same time, like you might know like oh like they just you know yeah you know, I just need to get through this and then they'll be okay. Like it's it's a fine line between mm. you know, pushing too yeah, hard pushing and too hard, yeah giving the right support, but also keeping them on track. Yeah, look, look, isn't that funny that we can relate that to what we've just been through? Yeah, like what we've been through for, with the business and what we've we've discussed as well, and people yep. that have listened to this podcast before of what we've what we're doing with the shop and how can you relate that to so many things? So if someone's listening to this right now that you're not into becoming a soccer player, but you might be into doing business or mm. starting a school or starting a fashion brand, I don't know, whatever it is in life, it's everything's so relatable. Um, it's just different. Mm circumstances yeah. i would say um it, it, because it's like right now it's like to relate to that is we were going to bounce on this shop and it was just like if we just kept pushing through which we have barely like whatever it's actually working out better yeah. mm. you know, and like, it's the, yeah it's the same thing it's like in in that situation we spent the reason that we were sort of willing to move on from it is because we'd spent so much of last year trying to push through that yeah and then we're like, Fuck, it just kind of seems like there's nowhere that it, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's like we never got the break. Yeah. And it kind of feels like right now we've got the break. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And and it's like right now, it's like we still, still got to make that decision to be like, okay, we've got that break. We got to keep pushing. Mm. Like, you know, it, like just or just be on top of it. Because if we stayed still, then it's kind of like, oh, we're just going to fucking go backwards. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like you got to be in that growth mindset. It's like, okay, so yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, I've been through this period of yeah. time and now you've got to grow but it, yeah. And I, yeah, I agree. But at the same time, like you do have to be, um, you have to be, you have to have the, yeah, a growth mindset, but also sometimes you just got to, you just know when, when you have to do something different as well. Yeah. yeah and course. that's where like, it's the fine line where, as you said, you push through it and it's, and it's been successful. Um, if you stop too early, like what would have happened? You don't know, do you? You yeah. don't know. So I think it's like, because it happens so much in football with with players like you're playing you're doing great and then something changes new coach comes in um just whatever it is new players come in mm. lose form whatever it is and then that that's that's that same same scenario where mm. you're like you're, you're questioning what like what am i doing like am i am i going to continue on am i going to try and change clubs am i going to yeah. quit like what is it and then and then you know it, it i think it in in life and in in business and sport like mm. if you if you do have that that mindset um it, it does all plan out the way it's supposed to yeah yeah of course do you think do you think as well like having a a great north star or a great goal yeah. or a vision yeah oh, fuck, i'm always burping this shit out. <laughs> um a, 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 a vision right you need to have a clear vision of where you want to go because if yep. you don't you can kind of wander around a little bit too yep. much and especially in periods like that yep. if you haven't got a clear vision yep. you're just going to more give up because it's like well fuck like if, yep. if i push through this well, yep. why am i pushing through it yeah you know what i mean like it's like yep. oh i've got to push through it because that's what tough men do yeah, what yeah, tough yeah, people yeah. do you know what i mean but it's like but why though like what's the reason for it like what's that end goal yeah well, yeah, definitely. Like you've you've um, yeah, you've got to have yeah, you've got to have your goals set in line. But at the same time, you've got to be um, you know, a bit fluid in it as well. Where mm. things can change. Like, it can. can if, yeah. I just use myself for example. Like, you might be having a great season, and you might set these goals to to win win a championship, to score this many goals, yeah, to play this many games, and then you get injured, mm. and then it changes. So you have to also be able to adapt to certain mm. things as well. And that would be the same for business, like. You know, something happens where you have to adapt, have to adapt. COVID. Yeah. yeah. Bang straight away. You have to you have to completely change your what, what's going on with your business. So. If, if COVID was a f- person, <laughs> I reckon Jacob would Jacob and I would punch on today. <laughs> oh, till it's gone. Yeah. You have no, to octagon. Exactly like, right. <laughs> see you later. Bam bam. Sh- sh- elbow elbow. in the face. We'll, we'll we'll um we'll go away from that one then. It seems like it's a it's a scary very one. touchy subject. It is very. Yeah. She fucking dumped me right. Just yeah. <laughs> treated me bad. She did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think man. that's where that element of fun comes into it. Because, like, at the end of the day, if you're having fun, that's the success. You know what I mean? Like, if you have these goals and yeah. you don't reach yeah. them, at least you can yeah. kind of look back and be like, "Oh, I played, yeah. had a few good games, played with my mates. It was a good time." Well, if that fun isn't yeah. there, then you're just always going to be yeah. empty because you're chasing something that isn't always realistic. Mm. And I say, I say, like, yeah, you have to enjoy it. But what I'm really trying to say is, not yeah, you got to enjoy like 
particular moments, but you got to enjoy the whole journey. The of course, times, yeah. The bad yeah. times as well, like, because yeah. that's that's really where where you grow and you learn as well. So you've got to enjoy the bad times, like, and, it, and at the time it's not it's not fun, but yeah. that's 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 that's, that's where you get fun. all the growth. No, nah, it's not fun at all. But that's where if you can, you look back and you go, look, I, I still had fun during that time. Yeah, yeah. I still had fun. I still enjoyed it. I still I still worked hard to reach my goals. But yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta relate that, and it's 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 fuck man, it's it's like a counseling session right now. We're talking about this, <laughs> and as I said, like we're conversating right here. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is this is really good now because it's like we're getting into that kind of groove. That we're just talking. We're not. Yeah. The camera's not here. Yeah. These guys are just listening in the conversation that we're having. Yeah. So just talking about you know the past year, it's like yeah, it was it was fucked. It was mm. shit yeah. for us personally, and and it, I'm sure for you guys as well with things rescheduling and stuff like it just inconvenient times and stuff like that but to look back you know we did have good times there oh of course we did yeah have good times i think looking on the other side like you know that lockdown was fun we did a few things like many times we played like among us and and like all other little things that we've done and you know coming out on the back end of it it was kind of like it was still shit it was pretty raw but yeah you're right you gotta like you gotta look at those moments and be like yeah it was fun you know what i mean not the whole time we get, we get to work with good people together you know what i mean we're all good we're all pretty much brothers here and yeah. when heavy was here she's my brother you know what i mean <laughs> um but yeah fuck there's something i wanted to talk about i'm ready bro bloody hell <laughs> fuck Blank. maybe i should prepare myself for these <laughs> things <laughs> now. Nice. Right we should i should okay so as you can yeah. <laughs> slideshow <laughs> I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write it on my hand like a chip. Like, okay, so <laughs> talk about soccer done. Okay. Yeah, that actually I remember now. Okay. <laughs> outside of soccer, is that regardless like, of like and outside of family and stuff like that, what do you enjoy? Like, what does Oliver like to do outside of soccer? Do I like- uh, yeah, like I, I just love, really, I just love you know spending time with my family, but. Uh, no. Also outside of outside of family and football, like I, you know, I love being back on the coast. Has been like just just amazing for me. Like being being like close to the beach. I love being near the beach. So yeah, going to the beach, swimming, yeah, uh, getting up early. Like I get down to the beach in the mornings, go for a swim. Yeah, you hear those breath works um, and stuff like that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, like, work with uh, yeah Dan Ballard as well, and he's yeah. he's um yeah really big in that in that area. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, up and coming in in you know a, a very undervalued area i think at the yeah. moment um, breathwork's interesting man yeah. like it's it's an interesting concept i've ca- gave it a little crack and i just for me personally as well like i love to have a go at all facets of life you know mm. and it, it, it's like it's like you know it's not for everyone of course yeah. but it, it definitely has its benefits it's yeah. like people love running yeah. you know yeah but I don't like running and that's okay. You know, I like riding a bike. That's, that's, you know, yeah. same kind of cardio yeah. and all that kind of shit, which is cool. Um, but I think it's sick that people do explore those worlds. Like you yeah. seem to be resonating with in that breath work world, not just like, not just pitching that yeah. one in, but like that kind of. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's um like that kind of, you know, it's a bit like a, um, yeah, undervalued, as I said, undervalued because, it's not like i don't know you can't really show like heaps of scientific facts about some of the stuff and that's why it might not be as popular yeah um, for but sure. when you actually you know go th- go through it and, and you do these kind of these kind of as work, you like experience kind of work yeah and experience it you really uh do well yeah you can relate it to like yoga do. bro like yeah only a couple of years ago like a few years ago people were like oh fucking yoga is such a fad and it's like yeah Everyone Huge fucking now, does yeah. yoga. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it has crazy benefits. Like if you do jujitsu, like John, right, he's a yoga instructor. Uh, he's a mad he yeah. does really good jujitsu yeah. and he bet yeah. any yoga instructor yeah. as well. So then he does yoga and it benefits his jujitsu because mm. he gets more flexible, he gets more out of like, you know, mm. it's just benef- yeah. beneficial for everything and well as as you said, like this, you know, you've you've said this is really like really about mental health and yeah and that kind of thing and this is one of the steps that is really beneficial for for that as well like it it, it does help people a lot so mm. um you know it's it's like it's, it's looking after your body yeah and and you know you've you've got to look after your mind your body all of it um yeah. nutrition yeah um to get you know the right balance and, and to feel good i would say as well um you know you're a fit dude being that you're an i will call you an athlete we will call you an athlete you know what i mean I like should be, you, yeah. you, you, <laughs> 
you know, you know. Oh, actually, I've got another fucking question to ask you. <laughs> I was going to say, go. you, you know, you saying Bolt, and then my, I was just like, ah, oh, oh. let's get some dirt on that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Oh, of oh, course, okay. oh, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. you so have can... to get another player in. All right, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll you talk. Get we'll you talk, can we'll, get all the dirt from another. We'll player. talk about we'll shit after the podcast. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking. Um, but like, outside of, of course, soccer and stuff like that, the importance of staying fit, like. <laughs> Have you have you contributed that? Do you, have you ever suffered with like mental health as such, like with any kind of anxiety or depression or anything like that in your life? And do you kind of help? Does, does it contribute? Your fitness contribute to kind of like maintaining that kind of mental state? Uh, definitely, as uh, as I've you know uh, developed and gone through my career, I've focused uh, a lot more uh, on the mental health and the uh, you know maintaining my physical. Uh, health as well um, to prolong my career uh, yeah. and I think that's a massive thing where if you look after you after your body and look after your mind and your nutrition it becomes you know as a young you know from like 18 to 24 you get away with a lot of it because mm. you're just like naturally you know you're naturally fit um, and you can you know you can get away with it but as you're getting older you need to really start to work on those things to, yeah. to maintain it at the top level yeah um, and you know during my career yeah I've had like I've had you know shit times where you just like as I said, you know, you question what you're doing. Should I be here? Yeah. Like I'm, I've moved overseas from my family. Like mm. at a, as a young kid, like do it, what, you know, what am, what am I doing? Take my family away to a different country. Mm. Um, you always, you always have those, you know, those thoughts, and and that's when it comes back to as well about looking after yourself mentally, so that you can uh, prepare for those things, and you can, you know, when when certain things pop up, that you can, you know, you, you know how to deal with it. Yeah. Is that sure. something that the teams, any of the teams have been involved with, focus on? Do they focus on like a mental health side of things as well as physical health. Yeah. Is that something that they um, also dive into? Yeah, I, I still think it's it's not nowhere near where it should be. Yeah. But there is definitely support that is now starting to, to you know, to start to happen because, you know, just from like, for example, online abuse, like that is like in the last, you know, 10 years, is, has been like the last 10 years for like athletes has just been crazy yeah um and so if you don't know how to deal with that and you and nobody knew how to deal with it when it first started because yeah. it was just like it was just a free-for-all like any anything could be said anything could be done so um you know you just you uh, you know as you go along you start to develop um how to, how to how to handle those things but now there's like you know things put in place for support for the for, for people and for players yeah because i noticed that with uh when the warriors boys were coming in there was a lot of them were posting about a year ago um how might have been around the nrl grand final there's a lot of attention on that specifically and there was a lot of people talking about how um there needed to be more talk about men's mental health yet when uh, the grand final happened, there was screenshots of all these comments of one of the players who I think he cried after something happened. Yeah. Um, and all these comments just bashing him, saying he needed to grow up and yeah, suck yeah, it up yeah, and yeah. be a man and yeah. all these sort of things. And a lot of the uh, boys were posting on Instagram that um, saying that something needed to be done about the fact that people were seeing them differently mm. and saying that they needed to be all this support, yet they were turning around and writing these comments. Yeah. that were completely contradicting what they were saying and especially from these sports where it's predominantly men who are competing yeah. at a high level and there's a lot of eyes on them and a lot of attention on them and it's very easy obviously for people to sit at home and say that they could have done a better job or that yeah, yeah, yeah. all that sort of thing yeah I've still got we're back we're back okay. yeah no there's a running joke like uh, <laughs> we had 30 minutes got a runtime of 30 minutes i didn't want to interrupt and because we're in a deep deep thing i, yeah. I usually kind of like i'll cut it and be like all right guys we're gonna take a two minute break whatever and then i can cut it back together <laughs> but look it is what it is you know what i mean fuck it it's the way you live your life you just gotta roll the punches sometimes That's it. but uh, let's let, let's continue on that one because it's a i think it i think you know it's a really important topic to talk about is the stigma around mental health even through athletes or people that are celebrities and stuff like that i was thinking about bam margera today actually um because i watched jackass yesterday and i was talking to someone about bam margera i don't know if you know who he is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, do. I don't know if you heard recently like past few years he's been dealing really bad with mental health and, and drug abuse and all that kind of stuff and uh when he was coming up like he was 26 20 uh, 27 28 when he did viva la bam mm-hmm. and he he was like an idol to me. Like I would actually remember going to sleep when I was like 13, 14, like G 
just thinking about just meeting, jumping into walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> jumping head into first. Walls. I actually started a thing. Uh, yeah, it was funny enough. Like I actually started a thing with a friend of mine, Puddy. We uh, best before it was called, and we used to jump off balconies into trees and shit. Oh, yeah. like, when I was like sixteen, so it was funny as. Um, but yeah like mental health within that guy like yep. he had this expectation to live a certain like it's i saw a post on it today because he's been in rehab and he hasn't had his phone on him but the, someone's been taking over his social media account and posting stuff about like i'm um, trying to support him and stuff like that and um what did they say was that social expectation to uphold as a celebrity or as someone that's famous, you know what I mean? Like he was always had to do something fucking crazy because that's what he was known for. You know what I mean? He couldn't just sit down and have a conversation. He always had to do fucking something nuts. Like you you always have to behave in a certain way. And I think like, you know, there's some people that I guess are lucky to, uh, no, I'm not going to say it's lucky because I I couldn't relate to it, but I don't know. You look at people like Conor, let's look at big people, right? You've got expectations. Conor McGregor, like he's the bad boy. You know what I mean? Mm. He has to act that way, mm. you know? So when you see something different, it's a bit like, oh, the fuck, like it's weird. Mm. It's the same as The Rock. You've got this perception of The yeah. Rock, like he's this big But that's gym, also you know like the mean? way like the media portrays. Yeah. Like that. Well. yeah, yeah. But of course then I, I assume maybe that, that celebrity would just be like, well, that person that's famous or known or he's whoever. Like, exactly like. You've got to act a certain them. way yeah, when yeah. you walk around, do you know what I mean? Like, like especially for like just even little stuff do you know what i mean it affects us even even in business and we're not even famous you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. it's like if we walk around it's like that guy that was like asked with the discount the haircut if i was rude to him it's going to affect what i represent here yeah and it's and but within that in my head i'm like really pissed me off because it's like you just have no respect for what i've built here Mm -hmm. so then mentally that can really like if i played on a long enough it could affect my mental health mm. and it could affect that as well mm. and um i don't know i just went on that fucking rant <laughs> i don't know bear much error to that uh, to the guy yeah. asking for a discount yeah. for the fucking hand you need to get him back in <laughs> like let me ask you a fuck let's get him on the podcast We're like wh- what's on. going on with yeah. your life brother you're right <laughs> yeah but oh, it's a fucking wild time man yeah it is hard it's just like that preconceived idea of everything like it's the same as like the NRL boys, it's like there's this idea that footy players uh, go out, they get drunk, they're a bit reckless, they're a bit loose and they do all this sort of stuff and then the reality is they're not like that at all. There's a very small percentage that are like that and they obviously yeah. the media hounds on that and that's, I guess, where that whole manly man, toughen up, don't cry attitude comes from in that regard. Um, for some, that's obviously already a problem with men regardless and with athletes. Um but it ties in everything and it, it is scary to think that they aren't really focusing on that when it is such a big problem um, and it's only like a new thing that teams are having to probably step in and be like we need to properly educate them on how to manage that yeah yeah because it won't stop it obviously like even if you walked away from the game now it's not going to stop there's going to be heaps of stuff that carries with you as soon as you leave the game as well yeah you know? yeah for sure like yeah, it's just it's just it's just about like from a player's point of view, it's about how you manage with it, how you deal with it, um, and your reaction as well to certain things. Mm. Uh, there, because it, it's about what what you can tri- can control as you, you know as yourself. Yeah, of course. Around you. No, um, of course so not. It's about yeah being able to you know control and deal what happens, but also at the same time, um, you know, we have the like have the platform as well to to voice like these, yeah. these things you know need to you need to improve even more and and that's what i think you know is starting to happen now yeah i guess it would just be like just blocking out that noise really like man you you'd, you'd experience have you have you been heckled when you've been playing oh, on, i'm sure you have every away sure. game <laughs> it's like yeah I, like that's noise really at the end of the day yeah. but that could be like so relatable to like that's such a a great example of like noise in real life but that exact same noise can just come on online as yeah. well like it's like those comments yeah. could just be put on mm-hmm. online but i think i guess those comments you're always looking at them all the time and stuff like that too so it's crazy bro it's crazy but uh what's the biggest crowd that you ever come out to not to just go like <laughs> this way but yeah i like it let's let's freshen up a little bit what's the biggest crowd um, you ever come out to probably there's been some like memorable ones uh playing playing in a world cup yeah wow well. uh you know, there's some really big crowds there uh, playing against Holland, playing against Spain. Mm. Uh, 
and then even even from you know one of our grand finals where we played in front of you know fifty thousand uh to then you know overseas as well playing in front of you know the similar similar kind of crowds mm. uh, can, can you describe that kind of feeling coming out there is it like i would feel like it's like electrifying like you know yeah it's, or you uh, kind of not, oh you don't really pay attention to it no i love i love it like uh i don't try to you know you know think too much about it going into the game but like yeah. when it hits you walking out it's um yeah it's, it's yeah it just you know it yeah. just helps uh you know gives you a bit more motivation uh it yeah. makes it exciting and uh yeah as i said you know as you as you're um you get older in your career like these are the things that you really cherish and, and you love and you mm. and you you know you want to play in as many you know as many finals mm. and as in front of big crowds and um you want to you want to be at the top of the top of the table and yeah and it just it just is it's exciting yeah that's hectic i can imagine be a skill to do you find when you were younger and you first started playing games in front of those big crowds do you notice the people cheering against you more and does that have like a negative impact on the game does it take you out of the moment and think oh these people are cheering against me or i've screwed up and then people are like obviously upset about that or yeah i think you just learn like you, you, it's in a in, it's an experience especially as a young kid so once you once you start to you know play a few games you get used to it and, mm. and uh, it you know it starts to become the normal and then mm. you you just you just play on and, and deal with it yeah. yeah you'd have to i guess pivot it from being a a negative thing and more of like a motivation thing yeah yeah, yeah exactly i think it'd be so hard eh? especially like people like ufc so you get knocked out cold and everyone now knows that you've just been absolutely annihilating yeah. You're like damn it's like, fuck. yeah like it's crazy how they can just swallow that like yeah get knocked out and then just get back up and like yeah i'm sweet like fuck. yeah yeah like, it sucks it. but it is what it is isn't it it is what sport. it is yeah bro let's uh that's 40 minutes yeah yeah that's a good it's that's good. a good little time Should is there anything you want to leave with is there anything you want to just quickly touch on like what's your favorite ice cream <laughs> Go on, what you favorite ice cream uh Mate, I just love just vanilla, just straight, straight up. Straight vanilla. Yeah, yeah. Vanilla ice Just like, but a high quality one. Yeah. Good quality. And a really important question, <laughs> I'll leave you with this one. Um, what's your views on Tim Knight? Tim Knight. What a <laughs> guy. <laughs> what a guy. Give us the Absolute tea. legend. Give us Absolute the tea. Absolute legend. Get him Let's on. Go. Get him on. Maybe we should get. We should. We should. Him on. You have to get him on. What and a talk guy. about that time that he uh, <laughs> scored a goal against the Mariners. <laughs> 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 oh, bro, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for jumping on. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Okay. Tactic, bro. Cheers.